a year or two from now. We'll find out if it's actually something brand new. Exactly. So um, earlier we collected a couple different types of coral um, and uh, a Sako Matsumoto might be looking into those corals, the Acanthagorgia and a Flexorid coral uh, that were side by side looking very similar but ended up being different corals. And those could possibly be a new species because this is the deepest step that we've observed those types of corals. So we might see those might be new. Uh, student, it's amazing how we're down here for so long. Yeah, that's why uh, even though we can go down in submarines with people in them, um, it's better to send an ROV because uh, ROVs don't have to eat, and they don't have to use the bathroom, and they don't have to sleep. Um, so we can just change out the crew on the ship, and the ROV can stay down for as long as we need it to. There are, you know, particularly advantages to each type of um, deep submergence vehicle. So, you know, ROVs have also different um, body plans. So we have this two-body system uh, that has some advantages over maybe a one-body system. Um, and then submersibles can go places that ROVs can't go because of the tether. So there are advantages and disadvantages to e each type of vehicle. And what you're trying to do might dictate what type of vehicle you might use uh, and what purpose you might use it for. Um, AUVs are another really cool up and coming up technology um, that is getting better uh, as time passes that we might use to survey an area really quick uh, before coming back and doing a more highly detailed observation like we're doing right now. That's it for the student questions. Well, thanks for joining us, students. I hope you're enjoying the dive. It's gone. The fish is gone. Now back to that similar to humans. There it is. Comment what? What Zoom are we talking in, about? Uh, I was just, oh, look at Halosaur. This Aww. looks like Halosaurus. So um, this fish has scales on the top of its nose. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> look how cute. I love these guys. They're so adorable. It's kind of adorable. Look at his little nose. Yeah, so the, the scales on the top of the nose are uh, characteristic of the genus Halosaurus. Thanks. But again, how no. are they like humans? I'm just saying that sea urchins and sea cucumbers are much more similar to each other because they are in the same, same phylum. So, like if we were to compare them to people, oh, okay. they would be, they're more similar than animals in a different phylum, say like the Chordata, which is what phylum we are in. Okay, okay. I was reading the chat, so I thought you were like, yeah, yeah, and so sea cucumbers are actually really similar to humans. Like, oh, no, what? no, no, no. I mean, what compared manner? to some other things, maybe. <laughs> like, like a rock? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Megan, what's the difference between a sea cucumber and a rock? <laughs> Is this a joke, or are you asking? It's definitely a joke. <laughs> Without a punchline. Sea cucumbers are squishy, rocks are hard. Mm. What's the difference Unless between a, a sea cucumber and a human? <laughs> Opposable thumbs. Depth, I guess. Opposable uh, thumbs. We yep. don't have cloacas. No, I think opposable Speak thumbs was yourself. the correct answer. That, what? <laughs> uh, when we find a new, a potential new species, do we always collect it? And what happens if it happens to be a particularly large specimen? Um, we do try to collect something if we do see uh, something particularly new. Um, Sometimes uh, the thing could be really small or difficult to get to, um, then that might deter us from trying to collect. Uh, but yes, we are going to make every attempt to make a collection of something that's pr particularly new. If it's like a really large coral, we wouldn't, we don't need the whole specimen um, for a collection or to identify it. We'll, sure. We can just take a small clipping, um, and that will preserve 
that animal and it can continue its life down here uh, and grow. So we, we re try to refrain from collecting whole specimens of large corals or sponges. We, we really only need a small bit um, to make that identification confirmation. And we can have really good video uh, recorded of that animal. Uh, and that can actually be really informative uh, in the description as well to see what it looks like in life. A lot of times when we recover these animals to the surface, um, their color might change. Uh, when we, If they do have bright color uh, and we preserve them in ethanol, uh, their color will leach out. So recording what they look like uh, in life is important and just as important as having uh, a specimen in hand. But having the specimen in hand allows us to look at small features that we might have a difficulty seeing using the cameras on the ROV, like looking at spines or internal structures, um, sclerites, uh, and those are important characters for the description of the animal. Somebody is digging the different Argus view today. Yeah, one of its, uh, you know, the cameras that we usually use is down, so we are using a backup cam. Not a backup camera, an alternate camera. <laughs> Well, this kind of shows you what um, some of the old video that I've had to annotate looks like. Because I've annotated video using a camera like this. How? What uh, can you, like, what? Well, I mean, when you're closer, <laughs> so also remember Argus is really high up off the seafloor. Okay. Uh, so the quality um, isn't as good, uh, but as you get closer, yeah, it's very challenging. Because don't you do some, well, I guess maybe not. I was going to say, don't you do some identification based on color, but perhaps not. Um, some, some is based on color. So, like, I might not be able to be as confident in some IDs using old video um, or video with cameras that aren't as awesome as the, the full Zeus camera that we have. Aren't as white balanced. On the ROV. But yeah, no, th te technology has come a long way and the, the camera quality uh, and having, you know, HD cameras, 4K cameras, 8K cameras, you know, I think we're up to 12Ks. I don't know how many Ks. At, at a certain point, the Ks don't matter. Are we up to 12Ks? <laughs> Is that a thing, Aaron? We're up to a lot of Ks. <laughs> the downside of uh, having such so many k's is uh <laughs> it takes up a lot of space oh that was a question that uh i i was going to ask um how much space like so when you get these 24 hour dives to annotate at full resolution how much space does that take up oh i'm coming home with terabytes of data is it on like a special hard drive that's in like a briefcase that's like handcuffed to your hand on the way home yeah definitely <laughs> absolutely in case the plane it's, crashes then. yeah no, well, at least i don't have to take a plane to get home <laughs> 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 i just have to drive five miles no I'll, I'll be taking this directly to my office along with some of the sea cucumber samples that we collected um they need to stay frozen at minus 80, so I will be transferring them to a freezer on campus. So and while I'm at it, I will drop off the hard drives in my office. Wait, why do you keep the hard drives at minus 80? No, <laughs> the sea cucumbers. The sea cucumbers need to be at minus 80, but while I'm at it, the hard drives will be dropped off, not inside the freezer. Okay, so you're dropping off the sea cucumbers, not inside the freezer, <laughs> and what are you doing with the hard drives? <laughs> what? That's cold hard that data. Scrambled eggs right there. <laughs> but my question is, um, so there's uh it, we have a freezer on board 
and you have a freezer in the office. Yep. So in between, do you just drive fast or like how, how do you keep them? Yeah, I'm just going to put them in a cooler and um, try to keep them as cold as possible. Okay. Run. Yeah, I, I will drive as fast as possible um, within reason. Um, the key thing is to, to leave at a low traffic time because during traffic time, time it takes to camp to get to campus is going to be quite long and even though it's only five miles you might end up taking well, you're going to university of hawaii yeah on monday yeah can i go with you sure feel free wait when does your plane leave my plane yeah the 28th what oh you have extra days yeah oh, okay i'm staying longer because i don't want to go back to rhode island where it's so cold yeah um, ooh, this is a Tim question. Maybe someone knows how much storage is available on total on the boat. Or, okay, I don't know if that's data storage or if that's storage. Let's pretend it's data storage. I'm very curious about that answer, too, but I don't know it. Yeah, I don't know that answer. I yeah, tried to get Tim, Tim to do question. an interaction with me, but he just laughed, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I could ask him these questions. Um, ooh, suppose the ROV drove over an archaeological find or perhaps even gold coins. Would we stop to pick it up or would we just document its location and move on? An archaeological mine. Find. Find. Find? find? Yes. F an archaeological oh. find? Yes. Okay, with gold coins. Uh, with or without. Like if we like came across like a shipwreck or like a chest of gold or actually if it was like just a gold coin... Would we just pick that up, or would we just leave everything and just, Aaron would say, awesome stuff here on the map and just move on? I definitely think you would mark it, and then... I think we would stop and we'd have a really long discussion about it. <laughs> probably a couple hours. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But there definitely would be closed-door discussions. We'd be staring at the same spot of the seafloor for three to five hours. Nice. I mean, a gold coin could uh, help fund more expeditions. It could, but yeah. is it, you know, inter international waters, territorial seas? Like, there's so many things we'd have to weigh. Yeah. yeah. Definitely don't want to get in trouble. Don't want to get in trouble. Uh, if it, yeah, if it was a shipwreck, we, we wouldn't collect anything We definitely from wouldn't it. collect the shipwreck, no. Right. <laughs> For sure. Oh, for transporting those uh, specimens, uh, dry ice or rock salt and ice, do you do anything special in the cooler? Um, I'm going to ask Liz what she wants me to do. Nice. She actually is uh, traveling for the holidays. She's left me a key in my office to get into the room uh, where the freezer is. Ooh. Yep. Freezer key. Uh, yeah, this person was talking about data storage. We don't know. Um, I can ask around. Maybe on our next watch, I might have the answer. Maybe. Depend depends on if I can get a good answer out of Tim. Probably just be like, a lot. Yeah, Ter I'm sure he'll laugh <laughs> and say, a lot. Terabytes of data. Easily. Well, let's see. Yeah, if we're... If you're going home with, like, if each dive, like, a couple terabytes, and we do, like, five to seven dives, yeah, it's a lot. That's just the dives. Right now, we are actively running all of these screens and streaming to you, and behind us, they're doing classroom interactions, which is a Zoom call, Zoom or Google Meet call to uh, sometimes multiple classrooms at a time. So, yeah, lots of data flowing. So for like, I'm not sure at what rate uh, we're generating video data, but um, past it, for the Lulukai ROV, we generate uh, about a terabyte for every 10 hours, I want to say, dive time. Yeah. It's pretty chunky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of data. But 
Chat said, yeah, let's raise it to petabytes of data. <laughs> <laughs> Terabytes is so boring. I remember the first time I encountered the uh, the term terabyte. Like, I know that it exists. Like, you know, a Google is a number. But, like, to actually see in practical use a terabyte, I was in college and I was um, uh, looking at music. And this guy had a terabyte of music. I'm like, a what? A, a what? Because, <laughs> like, you're, like, an MP3 player that was um, 8 gigabytes was like, whoa, wow. Oh, you paid my, a lot for that. My first MP3 player, I think, had uh, 512 yep. gigabytes. Exactly. And I was like, oh, wow, I could put so many songs on this. Did you say 512 this. gigabytes? Megabyte. oh, Megabytes. Megabytes. Like, yeah, that's really, that's a lot. <laughs> The cool thing about storage, though, is that every time I would buy a new uh, thumb drive, um, it would always be the same price, but it would be like double the space. So I had like a 512, and it was like $20. And then I had like uh, three gigabytes, and it was like $20. And then like each time I got a larger one, it was like $20. <laughs> I've also noticed that the size of the free uh, flash drives that people give away have significantly increased. Yeah. Like, Absolutely. I got an eight gigabyte one for free, and I was like, "What? <laughs> Where do you get free flash drives? Like at conferences, Every, yeah, stuff. career fairs. Yeah. What? Okay, just, so I've never been to a career fair, and I've never been to a conference in person. So how do you, how do you, what you store missed. any files? Yeah. yeah. This is what you're missing at AGU: the free stuff. Uh, yeah, the free stuff. That's yeah. so annoying, yeah. and the COVID scares. <laughs> yes, we are also <laughs> missing the opportunity to uh, be exposed to COVID. Time. <laughs> Not sad about and networking, but yeah. mostly the free beer. They took away the beer this year. What's the point of even going? <laughs> well, all they all they had instead of beer, they had a uh, ranch ranch dressing and excuse me, carrot what? Sticks. <laughs> what? Yep, ranch dressing. Are you supposed to drink the ranch? Go to the ranch dressing garden, <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> They have, uh, in the chat, card. they have one terabyte micro SD cards now. Really? It's and they terrifying. have 20, 20 terabyte hard drives now. I was going to say, my camera card that I normally shoot with is two terabytes. Wow. Not on here, but in, yeah. in What's that? other life. In other life. That's, that's nuts. I have like 10 one? portable hard drives yeah, in my one. laptop bag. Really? Yeah. For what? All the other stuff I'm working on and never work on. <laughs> <laughs> all, all my good intentions when I come out to the ship are in those. What's that? I think there's a C pen. Well, we zoom in. Yes, the annotator does get all of the feeds, and the annotator is Megan. And uh, also, what are we zooming in on here? Sorry. C pens. C pens. Go ahead, zoom. Then I'm going to gonna have to go. Oh, look at those guys. It's a rock. Should I stop? <laughs> okay, thanks. Come wide. Thank you for the sea pens. Coming up. Uh, during this dive, I have noticed several linear objects on the seafloor that resemble tree trunks or limbs. Have those been identified? Are they dead, sponge, or back. coral stalks? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Oh, wow. This is oh, so oh. sweet. Bro. This is a like columnar basalt. Yeah, this is columnar sweet. joining. You're coming up. You gotta come up fast. Oh, it just keeps going. Wow. Oh, that's a great. There's rock. a big coral at the top too. Ready for it? Yeah, I'm ready. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Ooh, Whoa, bam. Whoa, how oh. cool is that? Cool enough that we can't stay. <laughs> <laughs> it's the rock I've been waiting for. <laughs> great one. Uh, question about alcohol at sea. A lot of vessels are dry vessels. Yes. A it's lot of for, are not. It's cheaper insurance if you <laughs> have a dry vessel. FYI. The Canadian Coast Guard is not. Really? Yeah, if they have rations, they're, you're not allowed to just bring whatever. You have to get it from their stores and at designated times, and uh, you have to pay for it. And there's a certain limit, and it's very responsibly managed. So there's no drunkenness yeah when i was on falcor there was alcohol but yes you had to have no more than like i think it was one unit or two units or something 
per day. Adam told me he went on this cruise when he was younger, and um, they sold alcohol on the ship. Oh. But there is a limit to how much alcohol you could buy. You could only buy, like, one unit of alcohol. So that was either one, like, a fifth of liquor or, like, a case of beer a day. Zoom in on this, please. A case of a beer? A case of beer? Yeah. Like a six-pack? I don't know if it was a six-pack or a 12-pack. Oh, 12 beers? That would... Definitely. What's this animal that we're looking at? This is a uh, Victor Gorgia. Nailed it. Yes. Got it. <laughs> Love the color. Thanks. Yep. The purple is a giveaway. Yep. Um, and the backup question is, how do you unwind? Oh, I don't drink, so I don't consider drinking to be unwinding. Um, I like to uh, listen to music, go high. I'm an introvert, which is not obvious when I'm on this chat, but... Um, so I will just go find a corner and hide <laughs> in my room, maybe. <laughs> Or sometimes in like the corner of the lounge and like uh, put on my headphones and uh, draw for a bit. I go to the gym. Yeah. I sleep. Or that. Or that. Oh, is that a fish over there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's there a fish. Be. Way down yonder. Yonder fish. Is we it can too? do a fast, fast action. Okay, for okay fast fish. action. Let's do this. I'm just going to. Yeah, go ahead and zoom whenever you feel like it. Yes, this is a Cuskeel. Looks gil. like another Bazazetus. Right. Thanks. Yep. Blind drive guy? by drive by zoom. Hmm? Blind guy? No, no. That one had eyes, but really small ones. That basalt rock was really cool. Oh, uh, surprising. Question about crusting. I said they pushed it, posted a question before, so let me go through the chat real quick, see if I can find it. We can do a reset once I get out in front. Sure, yeah, no. Er? I've been dragging you pretty far. Hello. Look at that swirly at the back there. Swirly. You see a swirly? Oh, the white thing? It was a red little circle I think the crusting question in question is uh, with areas with sparse crusting and more angular cracked rocks would it be a value to collect to compare to some of the more encrusted places That's not for me but maybe for someone else what are you studying um so right now, what I'm trying to do is collect water samples with rock pairings at different depths along the seamount transect to get different oxygen concentrations um, connected to those. And uh, I'm looking to see if there's a relationship between all of those. So what's your next depth you want a uh, rock sample at? I don't think we'll make it. Yeah, okay. it's at the top. Okay. But to go. So basically what you're saying is that like we collect samples for the specific to the studies that we're doing. So since you're not studying that, we wouldn't collect a sample for that. Yeah. I mean, we could collect a sample, but we're kind of full right now. Um, so I think we kind of want to keep it to what is necessary. I want to make sure there's enough room for the last rock. Can't just grab one of everything, otherwise it can't get back to the top. Yeah. Ridge nav, five zero meters, zero seven five. Um, however, Adam did want some samples of fresh uh basalts, which would mean that they whatever coating would be less. So but where are we gonna find those? Yeah, I don't know where. We would find those. Like we'll that wasn't them. snarky. I was literally asking, "Where are we going to find those? Like, yeah. would that be like at the top or like uh, where?" Uh, you know, it depends. Um, we think that uh, crust enrichment. You know, the way crusts grow is like s still kind of. Uh, there's not a lot we we know about it. Um, so it's hard to say where we would find that. I bet um, we find it right here. <laughs> Look at this. This is a 
very basalty thing. Looks cracked more recently than the encrusting. That is you fairly basalty. We can grab some of these chunky ones down here. Uh, there was a scientist on last cruise that was all about the fresh basalt. And it looked exactly like this, very angular. So if you want something, now would be the time. Uh, I don't want any. <laughs> Yeah, but does Adam want something? Oh, Adam's not here. <laughs> Sounds like we're not going to get a rock. <laughs> yeah, if he wants stuff, he has to run up and then tell us to grab it just the way I did last He's night. Teleport up here. I'm trying to see if there's oh. one that looks small enough that can fit into a box. Oh, all of these could fit into the small box. I know. I just don't want to put them in with any ferromanganese crust because they'll knock all the crust off. Mm. Really? Yeah. The crusts are really brittle, so I don't want to put anything too hard in with them. We could also put them on top of the nodules in the front box. Oh, okay, let's do that. Okay. Yeah, we can grab one of these. Bridge pieces. nav hold position. Okay. And we can look at that stick of pathies. That's, let's go. We don't have a lot of time here. <laughs> I'm just well, as, as you're zooming either. in looking for a rock. What about this rock? Oh, that's big. What about the one just below it? Yeah. The little guy. Uh, the one right below your lasers? Yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm not able to go forward anymore because of the overhang. Standing by for a zoom when you want it. That looks like ferromanganese crust. Yeah, it sure does. That yeah. looks like it's just going to be crusty. Yeah, never mind. That's the wrong one. Rats. Where are the chunky ones? Oh, we're, i got to go more underneath that rock. Uh, do we have time? Yeah, okay, get all, all the way out of there, Antonella. I'm going to slide over a little bit. Do you want to back up? Uh, let's try it really quick, see if okay. we can make it. All right, see if you can get one of those really angular looking ones there. Sure. Is that right? Yeah, that one looks good. Those one look very angular. Not as crusty. It is loose. It's just sticky. I'm going to Argus for a sec here. You're 60 meters laid back. That looks terrifying. Roger. Okay. How's that? That looks good. It still looks like crust to me, but oh, yeah, maybe in the bottom. Yeah, I, I see know. the bottom. It's got so the oxides. The black stuff. Okay, come wide, please. We got to move before we stow it. You just halt there, and we'll get out of there. <clears throat> what was the sample number on that? If it gets in the box. Hello, back row? Yeah, sorry. Oh. Uh, you want to put it in forward box A? We're asking about the sample number? Oh, sorry. The sample number is 095. Thank you. Hey, we found the wall. So it looks like the question in question about the crust, I'm just going to read it all out, and you can interpret as you will. Um, the question was about the places being in the flow here, apparently having less crust, showing that there might be a certain velocity that might not be conductive for crust formation. Those outcrops in the current seem to be not That's crusted. Good. I thought we did answer that one. Okay, we can stow it now. I'm going to keep moving a little bit, but...
Sorry, let me tray out a bit more. Oh, well, coral, coral, ah. coral. No, 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 no. Sorry, that doesn't help. I'm going to close this box before we lose anything else. Just grab there, yeah. I'm going to go around this coral. We'll get it. We got time. Yeah, I hate that button. We still see it. Come on. The recovery mission. Okay. Go for it when you got it. Nice. Come wide, please. Yes, it's floaty. Yeah, do you want to put a little bit of that I-4 um, that we've destroyed a little bit in there? Close your jaws, yeah. Yeah, you gotta. Okay, what was that back girl? Sorry. Oh, uh, the uh, the bamboo. You want some of this? Coral, yeah. Since okay. we've already kind of collected it. Nice recovery. Yep. And stick it in the box with the rest of the coral. Which box is that going in? Can you put it in that same bio box B? Sure. Forward box beta. As much as possible, I guess. Yeah, this will be useful for genetics and stuff, so. So this is a Corado Isidne uh, bamboo coral in the I-4 claim. Yeah, if you let it go, it'll be good there. If you let it go, it'll be good there. All right. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. There's also some in the start in the port side. That was zero nine six. Roger zero nine six. All right. Six. I definitely got to go now.
Oh, wow. Look at that morphology of the rocks. Quite the wall. Oh, that's that little fish? What was that? Oh, goodness. It's gone now. Okay. Where are we? What were we doing? Oh. Um, I'm not moving the ship. They're just changing heading. So right. that's not going on. If that makes it any better. <laughs> I need to reorient. Go ahead, Bridge. Okay, do you want us to stand by? Oh, that's fine. Thank you. So standing by till they get a better heading. Roger. Well, do we want to look at those uh, two corals down there? I can reach them, yeah. Make the <laughs> arrow, arrow, doesn't, arrow. The arrow oh, doesn't no. switch directions. Maybe this the go here. Yeah, there you go. That's oh, my favorite. There's more of that thing from earlier. Do you want to get this piece too? Oh, probably not. Mm. I think we should actually. I think we should cut our losses. Yeah, if we we, we still have a piece in there. Yeah, 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 yeah let's yeah. just not open the box anymore. Yeah, yeah I put a note not to open those boxes anymore. Those boxes are very floaty. Okay, zoom in on these corals, please. So check it out. We've got two different types of corals here. These are two different types? Yeah. What? This is this is the Cliptrophora. Oh, it's got that sort of <laughs> V-shape. <laughs> What's the other one? Uh, I think that one is a Norella. Those are identical to me. <laughs> Yeah, but the uh, it branches more. And then you have this one that also branches in that same way, but that's a bamboo coral. So those two are promenoids, and then this one is in the background here is the I-4 um, clade bamboo coral that we just collected. Oh, here's a nice sparse branching bamboo coral. Can we zoom in on where it's branching right there? There are so many different types of bamboos on this seamount. You can see the node right here. Oh, it's so much easier to circle things when it's not moving. <laughs> That's great. Thanks. I'm still working through some heading changes. I'm just going to give them a few more minutes before I bug them. This is one massive rock. Would you call it a massive, massive rock? <laughs> 
Ma massive as a geology term. Massive as a geology term? Yeah. I don't really use that as a geology term. But people, what is a geology term? It is, yeah. I just typed a massive rock into the video highlight. <laughs> <laughs> Happen on there? Oh, oh, we're ready for some corals. I'm, I'm sensing the coral community coming up. It's going to be nice and dense at the top of this rock. Got some Chrysogorgia right here. There's a Paragorgia. Ooh, an Aridogorgia. So big. Oh my goodness. What? What's this guy doing? Yeah, what is that? Is that, that an anemone? I think it's an anemone. It must be on this, like, dead skeleton of a bamboo coral. Okay, zoom in, please. Okay, it's got it's got its all tentacles all hidden away. All closed up, but I believe this is a hormithid anemone, possibly a Feliactus. I don't think we, this is the first time we've seen this anemone on this dive. I think. How are they doing? Just finish that one. I'll check in. Yeah, we've got a lot of geo questions as to why we're seeing one formation or another. Um, this is the first time we've seen anything here, so we have probably just as many questions as you do. So we'll continue to research. This one might have an answer, though, in Coralie. I've always wondered what uh, about classifications of rock sizes. So, like, when when is it just a rock? When is it a boulder? Like, what's the line? What what classifies as a boulder? What do you have to do to become a boulder? Um, you have to be a certain size. Yeah, what size? So I think a boulder. Okay, let me try and remember. You can look uh, it up too. Boulder, you're I, think, I think a cobble is from 62 to 200 centimeters. And then I think a boulder is anything more than 200 centimeters. Let me check that though. Here's another stickopathies. I'm very disappointed that stickopathy is unrelated to the fact that it looks like a stick. <laughs> I mean, it is kind of stick like. Okay, zoom in on the stick, please. It's very, very spirally and squiggly. So, this is a black coral the whip form of a black coral. So we've seen unbranched whip-like uh, bamboo corals, unbranched whip-like primnoa corals, and here we're seeing another unbranched whip-like black coral. So being a whip shape can be pretty advantageous uh, just because you can move around um, in the current easily, very flexible. Oh no, I was really wrong, so oh. sorry. The size range is uh, a cobble goes from 63 to 200 millimeters. Oh. Anything greater than 200 millimeters is considered a boulder. Really? That seems kind of small for a boulder. There's nothing in between cobble and boulder? <laughs> What's below cobble? Uh, below cobble is gravel. So... You have coarse, medium, and fine gravel. Then below that you have sand, coarse, medium, fine. And then below that you have silt, coarse, medium, fine. Below that you have clay. The top is just cobble boulder? 
Yep. Mm. I feel like there should be another classification for like really big things, like yeah. bigger than just like something I could pick up. Right. Yeah, I don't feel like the kind of person that can pick up a boulder. <laughs> like a mega boulder. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Talk to the sedimentologist. They're pretty weird. I usually think about it. Uh, uh, if if I if it flows through my fingers, it's sediment or sand. If, if I can hold, if I can close it in my hand, then it's a pebble, if uh, or gravel, as you say. If, if I can pick it up with one hand, it's a cobble. If I need two hands to pick it up or can't pick it up, it's a boulder. Yeah, <laughs> and all of them can be rocks. Unless They're no, the sediment above sediment, it's a rock. What's yeah. this floaty? I guess sediment is considered a rock. Oh, absolutely. Own, it's a crinoid. Own way. But we also do. find rock. This but is a metallogorgia melanotrichos. Really? Yep. It's a metallogorgia. Zoom in on this thing, please. I've got a parent and six-year-old oh, in the chat. Hey. Oh, is that one of those uh, Totoro umbrellas? Yeah, your little Totoro umbrella with your six star Ophiocreus oedipus. We got a six-year-old in the chat wondering how cold the water is. Uh, it looks like 2.25 centigrade, so a little bit above freezing. Yep, 36 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's drop a weight plate.
Sorry, I went down a little wormhole, but I like found something kind of interesting. So Celsius is a Swedish uh, scientist who made the Celsius scale. Uh, he originally proposed for zero to be the boiling point of water and 100 to be the freezing point of water. And it wasn't until after his death that a different Swedish taxonomist, Carl Linnaeus, proposed that the fixed point be switched with zero indicating the freezing point and 100 being the boiling point. It's kind of cool. Can you imagine if it was flipped and then converting to a uh, Fahrenheit system? That would be <laughs> <laughs> a mess. so much more difficult. More difficult than it already is. Yeah. I do love that rock. They're a cool rock. Sorry, I mean, I love the corals and the sponges and the fish, but I really like the light on these rock formations. Thank you. As we explore unexplored unnamed seamount D, please feel free to send your questions in to the chat box on nautiluslive.org. On that page, you can also get uh, status updates. Um, you can look up our um, data and depth and learn more about the ROVs and Ocean Exploration Trust in general. And we were just looking at a cuscale fish in the genus Bazazetus. There's a nice sparsely branching bamboo coral. Very long branches. It's always impressive to see how how long and big these corals can get. Oh, nice.
Okay, here's a cool Luxorin. With an associate. Oh, another one of these really big I-4 clade Caradoisidne bamboo corals. Whoa, so huge. All those cubicky looking Gorgeous. rocks underneath. A great shot. So there's also some questions in the chat about uh, the currents. Oh wait, let's look at this thing first. Er. Okay, have a look at that sponge, please. Yeah, I wanted to take a look at this, uh, this sponge. So, this sponge, I believe, is... Uh, Thing called Amphidicella. All right, it is a stock please. sponge. Has a little associate on the branch. Maybe an enemy. Okay. the coral way high in Argus view, top right. Um, okay, so the question was about currents um, not being, having currents be too strong for the precipitate of the uh, colloids. Um, I think that it is possible if a current, there probably is like a perfect area where the current is strong enough to remove sediments, but not too strong to hinder the precipitation of the ferromanganese crust. Um, here, uh, with reference to how encrusted the basalts are underneath, like we are able to see texture, but who knows, maybe everything was crusted over really in a way that you're able to see uh, the morphology of the basalt better. We're really just not gonna know how thick the crust is or how much it is crusted. Um, until we're able to cut open the rocks and see for ourselves. One, because we don't know the age of, um, of the basalts. So we wouldn't even, if we knew the age of the basalts, we might be able to say, okay, we think the crusts are gonna be this thick because they started developing when these rocks were deposited at this time. But since we don't know any of that information, uh, this is just something we're gonna have to wait and figure out later. It's a nice looking rock. Okay, hopefully he stops. What is the dive plan for the next 24 hours? Ooh, do we know what the upcoming dive plan is, Megan? Yeah, we are um, going to be recovering around noon and I think we are planning to do one more dive 